thank you for doing this. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. You thank you. Yeah. How, how do it finally feel that you're actually finally getting the exposure you deserve after so long being a professional and being in the game? How do you feel that you're finally getting the recognition? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's very good. It's like um, it's because of people like you that uh, we get the exposure. And uh, it's very important for like a guy like me. I come from Belgium, where the the sport is not that big, and uh, it's very important to, to to get known in this game. That people know that uh, you have a European cruiserweight champion that uh, is here. So it's very important to uh, to get known, and especially with the fight that is coming now, uh, it uh, will be a very important thing. Do you think? Do you think the inactivity that you've like you've had in the past in your fighting once here, do you think that's because boxing in Belgium is so small? No, that's not because because uh, like uh, my first uh, my first EBU uh, title fight, I had uh, three opponents that uh, cancelled the fight. Then uh, the two weeks before they had to do for an opponent. And uh, after I had to fight the, the mandatory, for, I mean, the, the guy that I had to fight first. And uh, with my last EBU uh, title fight, uh, I had again uh, two, three opponents that cancelled the fight. So it's not my uh, my uh, my fault because uh, I was always there and always fights that, that keep cancelled. So. So, when, um, do you think that now you're fighting, um, you're with England, do you feel like your inactivity will prob you'll probably be much more of an active fighter? Yeah, but uh, what's here, because uh, I'm always training, so uh, after my last fight I had maybe two weeks uh, uh, off, but uh, after this I was uh, back at it again, so I'm always busy. Um, one of the things I've wanted to ask you for a while, you know growing up, like who were some of your favourite fighters? Because you look like you got that Mike Tyson kind of style, so what kind of fighters did you like growing up? Uh, I like Mayweather, I'm a big fan of Mayweather because of his defence and uh, his uh, ring IQ. Uh, yeah, I like him, I'm a big fan of him because when I watch him, you have uh, to, to, I watch always the small things that he does in the ring and it's very impressive. I was always a fan of him. What are the biggest changes you've seen since you joined the Ingle Gym? Like, what are some of the things that have you seen that improve your game? Uh, because here, here we walk, we walk always at a high tempo. So what makes it when I fight? I'm quite busy. That's that's improved uh, much, and uh, even the the English style, the switch, switch. Now I fight on both sides. Yeah. Uh, this is a change too, and uh, yeah, just the uh, yeah, edu education that you learn here. Just uh, you follow the plan. I just follow the plan and see where where it gets me. I believe that I'm at in the right uh, place. You see, um, out of camp when you're not um, fighting, obviously you train all the time, but when you're not fighting, you live in England as well. Yeah, I was uh, two weeks out and after the two weeks I came back here and back at it again. Oh wow, so, so you... I'm here like seven months and like maybe one weekend at the month. I go back to Belgium. Does it does? Do you feel like does it affect you like being away from family, being away from home? Uh, I'm on a mission, <laughs> so that I'm on a mission, and this is the thing that you have to do if you want to accomplish the something. So uh, that helps me, me a lot, and I have everyday contact with my family that makes it. Uh, uh, easier. One thing that's normally associated with um, Ingle fighters is they're very slick, good defensively, you know, they work off a certain style. But with um, you being a really good come forward fighter, did, was there ever a conflict in terms of like trying to balance out the fence and the tackle? Or was it just natural? Uh, it's natural, and uh, you know, in the, in the fight game, you have to always want to learn. And uh, I learned a lot. I come here and every day I, I uh, keep learning. Every day, so 
um, is with Ingle, um, did, he, did he try to change your style or was it more improving small things? No, here? improving uh, small things. That's what it's about here. Everybody has his own style and uh, he adapts at every fighter's his style. That's not that he completely changed my style, but he tried to bring things in my in my style, and it's me uh, to to show uh, what I want to use or what I don't want to use. That one thing when I first heard that you were with Ingle, I actually thought it was a really good thing because one small criticism you get is that. In late, the later the fight goes, you're, you don't keep that same intensity. Do you feel like since you've joined England that has changed? Like your intensity has carried to late rounds? Uh, you know what? Uh, my last fight was my uh, only fight that went to 12 rounds. So, uh, it's just mentally, you know? Uh, mentally, um, he makes me mentally strong because he been at his level, and that is a big difference because he been at his level so much, so he knows what he has to do, and that affects me too. Because when I was training in Belgium, in Belgium they don't have one, and it's with uh, respect, but they don't have one world champion, so that makes it different. Moving forward, um, obviously you've got your, your mandatory Lawrence O'Coley. You know, did you have um, were you, I, I saw you at the fight on Saturday. Yeah, I was on his two last fights. Okay. But uh, this is what I wanted because I left every, everything in Belgium. And I know the UK is the place to be for, for fighters. The, the sport is very big here. The UK fans are very big here. And when I came here, this is the first thing that I asked for. The, the first thing that I wanted. I had a fight because I had a hard fight. I had to fight uh, Mickey Nelson. Yes. I never looked uh, past of my opponent, but I know after this fight, this is something that I wanted. And I'm glad that I, I had it. What did you think of his last fight against? What did you think of his, uh, his fight against um, on the weekend on Saturday? What did you think of it? You know what? You can not say that much because the opponent was uh, not that was not that a good opponent. So when you are in the ring with somebody that don't do that much, you can you can feel comfortable and you can do what you want. But I have seen some. Uh, little things that, that can help me. Um, how much have you seen of him in the past, like other fights? What do you think of his styles in the other fights? Not too much, but uh, people say he's awkward, he's this, he's that, but you can't, you can't take a, away from him that he, everything that he did uh, till now, he did everything perfect, he won all his fights. So he's a good fighter, he won all his fights and this is the, the challenge. What, what attributes do you think he has? Like, obviously people talk about his awkwardness, but another thing that like, people also talk about is vulnerabilities, especially on the inside. How do you feel, like, obviously without giving away too much of the game plan and you being a good inside fighter, how do you expect to exploit a lot of, like we've seen him hold on the inside, how do you expect to exploit a lot of good stuff? Well, these are the things that we are working on it here. So, uh, this is the thing that I have to expose that he can't hold to start. So uh, this is something that we are working on it. So we will see what he, what he's going to do. Do you have an idea of when and where the when or where the fight will be? When the negotiations uh, started this week, so I have no idea. But I'm busy, so whenever they they, they want, I I will be ready. You you want to fight England? Yeah, of course, the UK fans, uh, this is uh, what I want, I want to fight here. This is the uh, biggest country to, to for, for the sport, so it will be very good for me. This is the things that I dream it of, so uh, I will be very glad if it's here in the UK. Do you feel like there will be a bit of pressure fighting away from home against the main hometown fighter you, and obviously the fans being on this side, do you feel like there will be any pressure? No, because to be honest, I have uh, uh, quite a lot UK fights on my, on my side for, for this fight. 
But you know, I'm a fighter and a ring is a ring, so whenever where it is, it's just my opponent that goes and there's a ring. So where the ring is, it's not that important for me. A ring is a ring. Yeah, um, in terms of the fight and in terms of the style, you know, you're a fighter who doesn't want to go 12 rounds, but are you afraid that if it does go 12 rounds, he might get the decision because he's the hometown fighter? Is that something you don't think about? This is something I don't think about. I know it can happen, but uh, yeah, let's see if the fight first goes to the, the 12 round because we are cruiserweight. I punch, I can punch, he can punch. So I think it's uh, more more chance that it don't go 12 round than it go 12 rounds. With, but if it goes 12 round, I will do everything to to, to have the decisions and. If not, after we, we move forward, then we move forward. Is the, is the um, European um, Championship something you intend to hold on to and defend more times with something after you win the fight, you want to move on to bigger things? No, I want to go to the world level. This is something that I wanted now, but I know now I'm in the UK, so I have the belt. So it's a... I, I believe that I had this this test in my, my last fight because uh, my last opponent was a good fighter for, for European level and after this I wanted to move to world level. Uh, I think after this one I will be I will prefer to move to world level but it's a good fight, you know it's I don't know if you can consider this fight uh, as a European level fight. Um, it's a good hard fight. We will see what it what it gives. Yeah, definitely. Is um, out of the obviously, if you want to move on to world levels, out of the three champions that are cruiserweight, who do you think is the best, and who would you like to fight the most? At this moment, Yusek uh, and Garcia moved to to heavyweight. So for me the best now, I will say you have Ridis and Dorticos, they are the, 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 the top guys. Uh, I think Ridis will be uh, good for me, for it's with my style, Ridis will be the best. Do you think the wins between Ridis and Dorticos in the World Boxing Super Series? It's a hard fight, it's a hard fight, it's a hard one. I will go for Dorticos because he's very strong. Brit is a strong too, eh? it's, it's, it's a hard fight, but if I have to choose, I will go for, for Dorticos. You see, um, obviously, you've gone for Dorticos. Of you um, and Dorticos, what about that? You know, Obviously, you might be able to fight the winner of the um, uh, World Boxing Super Series. Is that something you're interested in? Yeah, of course, the, this is the things that every fight, or oh, a fighter as me, want to go. This is my. My, uh, yeah, this is where I want to go. So if the fight happens, I will be very glad. It, uh, this is uh, the fight that I, I dreamed of to, to come from a, a country like Belgium, where the sport is is not very known, and I had to, to find my way to to, 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 to get at this this uh, level, and um, I make I'm on the good way. Uh, I'm here in the UK now. Uh, I had to fight the, the best cruiserweight here in the UK and after this I would like to, to, to move to, to this type of fight. Um, obviously you, you want to fight anyone but have you been a, um, would you be someone who's looking to be in the, maybe the next series of the World Boxing Super Series if the offer came to you? Of course, if the offer come to, uh, came to me I will not uh, hesitate to, to take it. Uh, yeah, this is the, the type of things that a, a fighter wants and the World Super Series, it, it's uh, all the best cruiserweights in, in one tournament, so it will be very good to get in the mix way with them. Do you, obviously you're quite like muscly and you're quite muscle bound, do you ever struggle with making weight? Never. Never? Never, but I never let my weight go to too high after fights and this is what helps me to, 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 to make weight. I never struggle to, to make weight. 
Do you, okay, one thing um, to me that interests a lot of cruiserweights, because the cruiserweight division is quite interesting. A lot of fighters, when they do make it to the top, they like to jump to heavyweight. Is that something you'd be interested in as well? Um, I don't, I'm not interested to, to, to go to the heavyweights because uh, yeah, these heavyweights are like 30, 40 kilos. Uh, <laughs> I, I, this is not uh, something that I am thinking of. Uh, I will. Uh, I want to, 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 to go to the top of the cruiserweight division, and uh, after this we can see. Maybe um, I would prefer to, to go down and uh, go down to light heavyweight. Down. This is something that I would prefer to to go to light heavyweight than go for it. Do you think you could make light heavyweight? Everything is possible. Everything is possible. So you never know. Right, you definitely you never know. Yes, is this something you would do after you conquer a uh, cruiserweight or is it something you would do sooner rather than later? After I conquer first, now I'm concentrating on the cruiserweight division. I want to, to get at the, the top level. Uh, I'm on the good way now and after this, uh, I will see, this is my, my goal to, to get at the, the top first. One of the um, other cruiserweights who also fought on Saturday and he's a British cruiserweight was Richard Jackpot. Yeah. What did you think of that? I talk, talk with him. Uh, maybe we could do some sparring. But yeah, he it was very good, tough, hard fight. And he did good, he did well, he did what he, he had to do and to get the win. <laughs> but uh, the other fighter was a, was a very good, tough Fight the two, so. Who did you think won? Because it was controversial at ringside, everybody. Who did you think won? I think we are for one. Uh, he has the knockdown too. I think that this has more. Um, but uh, it was a hard fight. You know? But if I have to choose, I, I will choose uh, the airport. Uh, is that someone who you be? Obviously, you're trying to beat everybody in cruiserweight. So is that a person who you be looking to fight in the future as well? Yeah, why not? Uh, why not? But uh, now I'm concentrated to, to, to fully. I never watch past of my next opponent. Uh, first, we have to, to get the job done, and then after this, we can see where we, we go. But I would like to, to move to, to world level. So I don't think we are poor. Is is at this level yet? But he's. He is doing good, so maybe in the future you never know. Um, about with the cruiserweights who did move up, because obviously that's not really something you're interested in. With the likes of Gassi and then Yusuf, how do you think they will do when you say the fighters are 30, 40 kilos above? How do you think they will do? Uh, very good because, because they are uh, quite big and strong, and also. And Gassiev has good power, Yusik has good power, good, good ring IQ. I, will, I think they will uh, surprise the heavyweight division. Um, when they were in cruiserweight, were they ever fighters you wanted to fight or was the... I want to fight everybody. I, I'm a fighter, you know, so if, if they, they were in my way, I would, would uh, like to fight them. But I know I'm not at this level, at this level yet, but... I'm making my way and I'm on the good way to, to get at, at this level. And when when I, I get to this level, uh, this all the parts that, that I want. Oh, now I have to uh, first say, uh, uh, Poli is my next fight and I never uh, look past on my next opponent. Break down how you personally think in an ideal world, you versus Poli goes. Um, I think I have, I have been tested, I have been tested yet, I don't think he, like if I watch his last two fights, because I was there, he has not been tested yet, and we will see how he reacts when somebody is there that wants to give it all and want to fight and punch and can take punches. I think it will be a different story as, as his fight before. So let, let's see what, what, what it is. Yeah, I mean, it would be interesting to see um, if in an ideal world, and let's say you do get past um, a cold, I mean, is it a thing where you want to jump straight into a big fight or you would take more 
mm, I want to jump to big fight because I had uh, my last fight was uh, uh, I fought Mickey Nelson. He, he, he fought for the world title and he lost a mixed decision in the guys his home. So you know the, yeah. So these are the fights that I want. And after this fight, I want to. I feel that I will be ready to to fight against these top level guys. Yeah, I mean. I hope that Kole uh, will be my my last test, my last test. And uh, after this, I will like to train at what level. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean. The things that I'm dreaming of, and this is why I'm here. I uh, train in a very good gym with a world class trainer. And now he has to get me to this kind of, of level. I mean, you, you turned professional, I think it was eight years ago, 2011. Um, yeah. Since then, obviously, you've had. 20 fights, or yeah, 20 fights, you're going into your 21st fight. Um, one of the interesting things about your career is in your 20 fights, you literally had, had it's basically been perfect, you've been actually untroubled in all of your fights. How does it go into the Akoli fight? Let's say, how do you deal with, let's say, something happens, let's say. You get hurt. How how do you prepare for those things if you've never had those preparations before? This is something we have to see after this fight because I never been down. I what will not, not happen. I will do everything but let happen. So this is something we will see when the, the fight comes. But I never been really hurt. So, Let's keep it like that. But I, I, I fought uh, quite uh, fighters that can punch hard. Yeah. Like uh, my uh, my first defense for my uh, European uh, title, like uh, Joffrey Batello. Oh yeah. I think he has he had uh, 35 fights or something. And he stopped in the fourth round. Of, with yeah. The fourth round of but he he stopped. He had like 28 or 29 knockouts. So. These are uh, yeah, guys that can punch, and if I don't get hurt in this fight, uh, they, they say something about my defense too. So we will see what this fight, how this fight is going to go. Before, but, uh, before obviously we wrap it up, I want, obviously one of the legends of the cruiserweight division yeah. for such a long time is Lebedev. You know, and obviously he's you know he's gone, he's retired. Yeah. What, Obviously, you had a fighter coming up and seeing him. What did you think of his career? And was it ever a fighter that you ever thought you would ever cross paths? Uh, yes, but I, uh, you know, I look at the fighters that I'm really interested in, and Lebedev is not a fighter that I follow. So I, I seen uh, some fights of him, but this is not the fighter that. I really followed, so I can't say that much about that. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much. I mean, that was very interesting. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.